Well, good morning, church. And if you're part of Redlands Christian Center, I spend special greetings to you, letting you know that I miss you. And if you're a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're part of the church, and we're brothers and sisters in the Lord. Thank you for joining us today. We're continuing on day four of our fast, and today the title of our fast is to separate yourself from the ways of the world. Uh, but first of all today, I just really sense in my heart by the Holy Spirit that we're going to lead off in prayer because I just know that uh, by what God's been just sharing with me, uh, and this is Bella in the background. I see she's just moving around, so this is our little Pomeranian. Bless the Lord. Uh, so anyway, I just want to pray with you this morning because I sense in my heart that so many people are just struggling with what's going on in their lives, um, different circumstances, prayer requests that have been coming through. So let's just pray this morning. Father, I just come together with the body of Christ, with believers. Lord, I'm just so thankful that we can come to you. Father, this is a time of need. This is a time of trouble in, in many of our homes, in our households, and in our nation today. But Lord, we can always come to you in prayers and supplications, intercessions. Lord, knowing that you hear us, knowing that your word stands and gives us authority to take our place, seated together with Christ in heavenly places, where we're far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. So Father, we take our seat of authority and we pray for our president, Father, our vice president and those in authority over us as decisions are quickly being made that impact every single uh, citizen of the United States of America and all the nations in the world, Lord, because it's not only impacting us uh, physically and socially with with this uh, illegally crowned virus, Lord, that we uh, come against in the name of Jesus, but Lord, it's impacting our households, our e economies. So Lord, we just continue to stand with those in authority, Lord, that they will hear from heaven. They will have wisdom from on high and they will make good godly decisions. And Lord, you will continue to make crooked places straight. We know that the devil has come to cause harm, to cause destruction, to cause chaos, but oh God, you came to bring us peace that passes all understanding. So right now I stand and pray with every person that uh, comes and listens to this video. I stand and pray with every person that's joined to us in the body of Christ at Redlands Christian Center, all of our families, our loved ones, our friends. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus and thank you for your angels today. And I'm asking Lord that you send your angels to minister to every heir of salvation to bring a, a calming, that peace, that shalom, that where there's nothing missing and nothing bro broken. Lord, that you continue to meet our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you that you are with us every step and you're bringing us through safely to the other side. And Lord, as we continue in our fastings and in our prayers, you continue to hear from heaven. And we just thank you, Lord, for a supernatural move of God to arrest and stop this virus from spreading throughout the world and, and bringing destruction to lives. Lord, we thank you that you bring order back into our lives and you, again, just bring us into that place where we can rest and trust in you. So we give you thanks, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, let's take a look at our fast this morning. Again, this is day four of fast from Redlands Christian Center, and you can find our fast on our devotions and the scripture reading and all the information you need on our website at redlandschristiancenter.com. And while you're there, uh, if you could subscribe and let us know that you're participating in this fast. We'd like to know who we're joining with in this time of separating ourselves from God unto his plans and in his purposes. So praise the Lord, day four, separate yourself from God. And the commentary, and I'll, I'm gonna read it today. Yesterday, we just took, did a shorter time. And so today we're gonna read it and do a little bit more of our study together. And it says, as the Israelites began rebuilding and settling in after their exile, their le leaders realized that the people who God had delivered and brought, it, brought back into their land were looking more and more like the ungodly settlers who had taken over their land. And so that's an interesting thing that we find ourselves when we look around today and, and we ask the question, does the church look or act differently from the culture of the world today? And I think that's something that we need to, all of us take the time and examine 
our own lives during this time of separation where we're separating uh, ourselves unto fasting and praying praying uh, to God. And again, I just want to interject right now that uh, if you've gotten discouraged, if you've gotten busy, you've skipped a day, you've broken your fast, get back up. The Word of God says, uh, and one of my favorite scriptures, I believe out of Micah, it says, when I fall, I shall arise. So don't pay attention. If you've skipped a day, missed a day, start back up. The important thing is just get back up and start again. Again, God's not looking for perfection. He's looking for willing hearts. And when we willingly go to God and acknowledge that we've fallen short, and the Word of God says we've all fallen short, don't put that condemnation on yourself, but just get back, make it right with God, and start back up. So when we're talking about the church looking and acting differently from God, again, this is a time for us to examine our hearts, our households, our ways. We're all having the opportunity to, to take some time out, to spend more time with our families and loved ones, to, to purpose in our hearts, to lean more, not into our own understanding, because who can understand this in the natural? None of us, but God. God knew that we'd be in this place and in this time at this point in history. And God knew, and he already equipped us and provided everything that we have need of. So when we can just learn to trust in him, get in his word, let our minds be renewed to the word of God, we're going to find that we're going to have that peace in our spirit that God wants us to have. So reading in Ezra chapter 9, because we've been mirroring, mirroring, what an interesting word, mirroring our time together with what was going on back in the time when the Israelites were kind of coming out of captivity from Babylon and the prophet Ezra uh, from the spirit of God knew that it was time to go get some more of the Israelites and bring them back into the promised land. So in Ezra chapter 9, verse 1, uh, it says, Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites, and again, again this is interesting, because it's not just the people of Israel, but it's the priests and the Levites, the, the, the leaders, the spiritual leaders, the Levites, the praisers, the worshipers, the ones who worked in the temple, they also were looking more and more like the world. So it wasn't just the people. It was the group as a whole. It says the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations, doing according to what the ways of the world, what their hearts desired. And we can only look, we can look at the situation in the world. We can look at the movies, the the activities, the uh, promiscuity, the things that the world is participating in, and how much of the church, including all the leaders, the the pastors, the um, the elders, the deacons, the praisers, how many of us are participating in the ways of the world and thinking that it's okay with our God? Our God wants to protect us from these things. He wants us to keep us from these things, but we need to do our part in keeping our temples holy. And when we miss it, we go with the blood of the lamb before our God, and he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So again, church, we're being exhorted in this time to, to be the church, to be separated, to be holy as our God is holy. So uh, today I want to look at the, some of the scriptures that we had. We're going to skip uh, Exodus 19, 6. You can read that on your own. And we're going to go to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, verse 14. And it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Again, church, we are the children of the light. And let's let the light of God shine in our hearts. If we have things that we need to change, things that we need to get right, all we have to do is purpose in our heart to submit those things to God. Let the word of God wash over us. Be in studying God's word and look up scriptures daily. And let's get our mind renewed so that we have the ability to get these things right with God so that we can look more like the church and less like the world. Our next scripture is out of Matthew chapter five. Praise the Lord, Matthew chapter five, and that's uh, verses 16 and 17. So let's turn there. 
and it says, this is uh, our daughter Tara's, one of her favorite scriptures that she memorized as a little girl, and she still, it's her favorite scripture today. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Jesus came to fulfill the law so that we could live in his grace and his mercy. And we're just going to let the light of God shine. Remember, the world needs to see our good works. And again, if, you, if you've done something, if you, I, I, what's come to me right now is, is friends and relationships that are maybe broken. Go and reconcile those. Let the light of God shine in our hearts and in our lives today. Um, Proverbs chapter 3. This is very important in this time that we're in. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Let, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart so that you shall find favor and good understanding in the Lord, in the sight of the Lord and God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. Again, church, if this was ever a time to trust in the Lord, this is the time. Let's trust in him. He will get us through these times. If we rest, if we just allow the spirit of grace and God's love to wash over us, remember God's love never fails. When you're anxious about things going on, cry out to Jesus. We can always know and believe that our God is for us. He is never against us. Even when we're wayward, even when we've gone astray from him, even when we haven't taken our time to pray and to fellowship, God is still there and he's watching for us to come to him and just trust in him and simply put our hands up and say, Lord, I love you. I trust in you. I don't know how this is all going to work out, but I trust in you to make every crooked place straight. And then let's go to Psalm 51, verse 10. Bless the Lord our God, Psalm 51, and verse 10. Oh, Father, let this be our prayer today. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. So praise the Lord. That could be our prayer today. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Let us not look like the world, but let us be separated and cleansed unto you, let us, as we continue our time of fasting and prayer, let us draw near to you. And Father, when you said in this scripture by the psalmist, take not thine Holy Spirit from me, your Holy Spirit is always with us because we see in the New Testament that you never, 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 never leave us, nor do you forsake us. So Lord, I just thank you that we're finding joy in today. And as believers, we can find something good to thank God for, something good to praise God. There may be things going awry. You may be facing financial pressures. You may be facing um, just depression, being at home, being separated, not going about your daily routine. It is unsettling, but we can always settle into our God. We can always praise him for the goodness of what we have. We have homes, we have blessings, we have abundance of good things in our life. And I wanted to share with you um, Pastor Tara shared with us, we, you know, as you know, we have our sign in front of our church and we're always looking for ways to minister to the people for, for giving people that drive by our church and we're at a very busy intersection. So we get lots of people driving by. And there's a couple of sign quotes that uh, Pastor Tara saw and she sent in and I want to read those to you today. It says, for every Goliath, there is a stone. There is a stone provided by our God that will take every Goliath down. Oh, you may see the Goliath and he may be standing uh, by in front of you, taunting you like he did to David and belittling David and, and causing David to try to have fear and trembling come upon him as this massive giant 
was uh, was sitting before Goliath and all David had was just a slingshot and a few stones. You know, it doesn't matter what we have in the natural to fight the enemy with. We have our God. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So you believe God for the right stone to defeat the Goliath that may be facing you today. The other sign quote is, is if prayer was your job, would you still be employed? And you can, we can each ask ourselves, if our only job was to pray and to speak God's word all day long for at least an eight hour shift, how many of us would be employed? And I know we can't spend constantly, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours in prayer, but we can take time out of most of our moments of the day just to acknowledge God in all of our ways, to seek him, to ask him for wisdom, to seek the mind of Christ. And for those things that are perplexing in our lives, we can just say, God, this is so perplexing to me. I don't understand it. I don't know which way to go. But we can then take the opportunity to say, God, I'm not going to lean to my own understanding, but I'm going to trust in you. So I am trusting God for you today to have a blessed day, to be strong in the Lord, to in the power of his might, to rest in the comfort and strength of him, and to let the love of God wash over you. So church tonight, I want to remind you that uh, not only have we been praying for you, but thank you for the prayer requests that you've been sending in. We're going to have service tonight from five to six. So if you can join us live, we would love to have you uh, submitting prayer requests to us, uh, offering your prayers unto him, prayers of agreement, because together we're stronger than we are individually. So pray with us tonight from five to six. Uh, we'll be live. Um, at Redlands Christian Center. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. Also tomorrow, we're going to have service from 930 to 1030. So hopefully you can join us for that. And again, we're making ways to interact. So continue to um, comment to us, to write in prayer requests, to let us know you're there because we want to stay connected during this time because we are the body of Christ. Prayers, prayers and blessings to you for this day. Amen. We'll see you at our services and we'll see you on this uh, time of video tomorrow for day five. Blessings to you.